Hi and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to find out how to age well and look and feel good for longer. And I share my research, experience and advice with you on this channel and also on my website, honest.scot, so be sure to check it out. I've talked often on this channel about my own personal little ageing bugbear, which is droopy eyelids. My eyelids are naturally very hooded and that doesn't bother me. The always been like that and it's part of what makes me me. But age isn't particularly kind to hooded lids because any amount of sagging and soon the skin is spilling over your eyelashes and it's both aging and not great on a practical level either. And in my case, allergies and a dry eye condition that leads to swelling and significant puffiness around my eyes has stretched the skin on my eyelids further adding to the problem. But I have found ways to manage it in recent years. Here's a photo of me four years ago with eyelids sagging so much I routinely had dermatitis on them because they were brushing over my lashes and getting irritated. Today, they're a heck of a lot better than that. And though I do still have some loss of skin elasticity on my eyelids, I've been able to tighten the skin in recent years without going under the knife. Though that is a route I may go down one day and have inquired about recently as I talked about in last week's video, but I'm not quite there yet. So this is what today's video is all about, the non-surgical skincare and treatments I've tried to keep my hooded eyelids in check, ish. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video around the skincare products and devices that I've cherry picked out of all the treatments I've tried over the years and now use in my daily routine. I'm gonna to link to that video here because I don't wanna just repeat myself all over again, but I did make the point in that video that I use the same skincare over my whole face and neck. So I don't buy eye creams in addition because I find they're just slightly more concentrated versions of the face creams in general. I will discuss shortly a couple of skincare actives I've found particularly helpful for skin smoothing and firming around my eyelids. First though, I'm going to start with non-surgical clinical options for eyelids, starting with filler. Last week on the channel, I explored the pros and cons of hyaluronic acid filler with two of my favourite aesthetic specialists, Dr Chen Shu and Dr Emmeline Ashley, and I revealed that earlier that same day, Dr Emmeline had injected a very small amount of hyaluronic acid filler into my temples to help support my eyelids. Now, she injected just 0.5 millilitres of filler each side, so it's a minuscule amount because I really didn't want to look filled, so it made just the smallest difference in terms of adding a little bit more volume. If I show you the pictures taken just before and just after, you can potentially see a subtle lift and overall a lighter kind of refreshed look, but it was a preventative step to aimed at supporting the overall structure around my upper eyelids. I mean, there's a part of me that wishes I'd asked for a little more filler, but the more you put in, the less natural the result and it starts to change your look. On the other side, the results when you put in more are going to be more noticeable and that's the trade-off. That's what you have to weigh up for you when it comes to these treatments. They're also very expensive, hundreds of pounds and dollars for just a small amount at a time, so there's a big cost consideration and that is also why I opted for a, a tiny amount to start off with. There are a lot of blood vessels around the eyes too, which means you have to be very careful injecting anywhere near this area and it also limits the options for the injection site. So keeping it safe, Dr. Emily and I decided to go for the temple to offer that support from the side. So that's one option to keep in mind. I also get Botox between my brows in the 11s area just around once a year, but I don't use it above my eyes because I find the relaxation of any muscles there does cause some further sagging. Some practitioners think it's possible to use Botox strategically to lift your brow, but that's a trickier treatment. And the one time a practitioner tried it on me a few years back, it didn't really help. Other practitioners may achieve different results, so there's no guarantee there. On to another non-surgical option now, which is blepharoplasty through laser or thermal treatments. So a few years back, I had a series of thermal ablative treatments in a clinic and the practitioner used something called Tixel Thermal Ablation, which basically uses a heated plate to create controlled burns on the surface of your skin. The skin tightening results are said to be equivalent to those of fractional CO2 laser or a deep chemical peel, but the recovery time 
is only around three days. I had quite dramatic swelling around my eyes for the first two days after Tixel, and then it settled really quickly. So if I had it done on a Friday morning, for instance, by the Monday, if I wore my glasses to work, no one would have known I'd had anything done. There was just a little bit of dry skin peeling still left by that stage. Here's the before and after photo from Tixel, and I have to say that it helped visibly I was expecting a more dramatic result for the £800 I spent on that course of treatment. It did mean my eyelids were no longer resting on my lashes, which was causing the dermatitis and really getting me down. And it's probably the single most effective thing I've tried for actually lifting my lids without surgery. But I should flag that the heat treatments did leave my skin a little bit weakened and the skin around my eyelids was quite fragile for a few weeks afterwards uh, before I eventually managed to recover the kind of volume in the skin there. Other similar options include using a plasma treatment like Plexir, which uses a pen-like device to form a tiny art between the tip and your skin. And that creates plasma energy that causes a tiny spark that then vaporizes your skin cells, leaving behind a carbon crust. It offers similar results to Tixel. I've had a few viewers report really good results with it, but there is more downtime involved. So that's closer to a week before the marks disappear entirely. A few years ago, I also tried Alt Therapy, an ultrasound based skin tightening treatment, which I had on my full face. Now they avoid the eye area itself because the energy from the treatment is too powerful to use there. And while I thought that the overall treatment visibly lifted my jowls, I didn't think it helped tighten the skin on my forehead. And so there was no obvious difference in my eyelids after that treatment. So I wouldn't personally recommend it for a brow lift. Others may have a different experience and do let us know in the comments if that's you. So these are the clinical treatments I have some experience of. There are of course others and the key is finding a reputable medical practitioner who's highly experienced and rated for the treatments they're offering and who can help find the best solution for you, which will of course depend on your age and skin type. Next, I wanted to talk about non-clinical devices that you can use at home. Again, I'm not gonna labor around these because I've talked very recently about my two preferred options, red light and microcurrent. If you click below where it says show more, I will link to dedicated videos on both. And I also talked about them in the recent video I did around my full skincare routine. I'll also link in the description to the devices and the products that I use day to day, which include a red light eye mask for just three minutes every morning while I'm working out, which I think has improved the volume and texture of the skin around my eyelids. I believe a few minutes of red light is all you need to get the benefits without overdoing it, potentially tipping into negative effects. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I have dry eye syndrome and seasonal allergies that have caused my eyes to swell up and stretch the skin. And I had been able to get that under control by taking daily omega-3 called liver oil capsules, which improve the quality of your tears and that's half the battle with dry eyes. I also used in the past a little pen that delivers red light, heat and sonic vibration designed to rejuvenate eyelids. It's called the Venus Eye Pen and I have actually used it to help keep my oil glands open and reduce fluid buildup around my eyes. I have done a little video on this very topic so I'll link to that below as well for more information but when I got out of those habits I did pay for it over the summer uh, when allergies kicked off some big problems so I went back to taking daily cod liver oil and I used uh, the Venus eye pen over peak hay fever season as well. Now as a beauty columnist and someone who shares content around skincare and aging well I never stand still for long when it comes to trying new devices and just this week I swapped the red light face mask I've been using for a few minutes most nights for a red light panel that will give me coverage of my neck and collarbone area as well as my face and that also has a pulsed light option. Pulse light is something I'll take a closer look at on the channel once I've used it for a few months, but I don't want talk of it to throw you from um, using your LED red light mask for those who have them, because there are lots of benefits to be had, and I've experienced them from constant red light over short bursts of a few minutes at a time, and I feel that's contributed significantly to the health of my skin in recent months. 
including around my eyes. I've also found microcurrent helpful in um, keeping skin and muscle toned. It's never given me a dramatic eye lift, but I do think it has clear preventative benefits and has helped me keep my jowls in check and prevent any further loss of elasticity in my forehead where I have a few deeper lines that sprung up over my 40s. Lastly, skincare. And I mentioned at the start that I think it's really a mix of actives that have helped my skin, particularly having consolidated a skincare routine since the start of the year. And I think it's the mix including antioxidants and a gentler retinoid in the form of retinaldehyde, which I use every other night to ensure my skin is keeping up pace with it and not having to work too hard because retinoids work by speeding up uh, cell turnover, which has the skin smoothing benefits, but you have to find the right pace and strength for your skin. And I think that that can be missed in the conversation around it and we can get fooled into thinking that the, the more we put on our skin in terms of strength and concentration of actives, the greater result. But as with putting energy into your skin, you can overdo it and create a counterproductive effect. So the trick is to build strength and frequency until your skin reaches its happiest point and is well hydrated, showing no signs of dryness, dullness, or irritation. Dry and dull skin around your eyes in particular can be very aging. So I've found that by backing away from stronger retinoids at the start of the year, I've actually managed to improve the elasticity and volume of my eyelid skin. But as I always say, that's just my experience and different skin types respond differently to certain ingredients, strengths and concentrations. So you are the best judge of what works for your own skin. We should also be cautious when using retinoids near or around our eyes, um, avoiding your lower upper lid certainly uh, and using it very sparingly because some ophthalmologists caution that retinoids can contribute to dry eye conditions. So that is something we should at least be aware of. As far as skincare goes, sunscreen is a given for me in protecting my skin against further photo aging. And again, something I've talked about at length, so I won't revisit it. I will link to all related videos in the description, along with the products that I use, as I mentioned before. And as a final word on helpful skincare, I also believe using products with peptides and growth factors has also had a visible impact on the health and condition of my skin in general, including around my eyes. Nothing individually is a miracle worker and the improvements I've seen are subtle, but if you look at the videos of me at the beginning of this year and compare them to today, I think you can see the difference in skin quality and I know quite a few viewers have kindly commented on this. So these have been the steps I've taken that mean aged 50, my hooded eyelids are not totally out of control, though not obviously what they were in my 20s and 30s. I know there'll be a lot of people who watch this and think, for goodness sake, can she not just be done with it and have the surgery? I've also had viewers say that to me along the way, and maybe the date will come when I decide to go for it. Cost is an issue, as is my fear that it changes me in a way that I won't love. So for now, I just keep treading water. That's my experience on things that can help eyelids, all wrapped up in one video, though I have probably missed something out. I've also tried those instant eye lifting serums, for example, which usually include sodium silicate and that creates a film around your lid to physically tighten them. But while I've had viewers say they can be helpful for bags under the eyes, I personally find that with the motion of your upper eyelids, it just doesn't stay intact up there to offer any meaningful lift. Again, just my experience. I always love to hear your thoughts and experiences though. What have you tried that has or hasn't worked for your eyelids? We learn from each other, so do let us know. And I'll be back next week with one of my most exciting interviews to date around longevity supplements with a well-known YouTube doctor that I know a lot of my viewers follow. So be sure to hit subscribe along with the notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss it and for more advice around aging well and skincare remember to check out my website honest.scott to read my regular blog posts for now thanks for watching and i'll see you next time